Hey there guys and welcome to Satisfactory. Well hey there team and welcome back today, we're going to be picking up a bit of Satisfactory. Now, again, I've been, I have been scrubbing through some of my older stuff and reviving certain things here and there. You know, there is method to the madness, but at the end of the day, um, we can't deny that there's been a lot of interest in Stationeers and in Stationeers-like games. And this is a... Uh, oh, excuse me. This is a process management sort of game. So where Space Engineers is a little bit... All right, so if, if, uh, if Station is is our jumping off point, Space Engineers, and even Planet Nomads to a point, spread off in the more creative freedom direction. This goes more in the process management towards a sort of Factorio. Funnily enough, I've barely ever played Factorio, uh, but I need to probably do that on the channel as well. Anyway, so some people have described this as a 3D Factorio. From what I understand, that's a pretty straightforward way to do it. There's no survival component, but it is totally about, I can bang two rocks together and make uh, something and then I can make a machine that bangs the rocks together for me so I can go do something else So it's this it's for the anal retentive and I don't use that disparagingly because I'm in that category and I love it Just creating automated processes to make bigger toys um, So that's basically that's my there you go. There's my review <laughs> But I thought we'd pick up and give this a red-hot go. I saw them. There's some rumblings around their their Twitter page as well It looks like they might be about to announce update number three Seems to have some sort of vendor mechanic, but this is a game that I keep meaning to make time for and I thought I'd just throw it out there on the channel and see if you guys might be interested. Let me know what you think, um, but it's definitely in that similar sort of food group adjacent when uh, when it comes to the station is stuff that people seem to be coming for the channel for more and more. So you start off, you can pick one of the three sort of biomes. From what I understand, this is the uh, the easiest sort of one. Well, it gives you, it gives you a rough idea. It changes the sizes and all that sort of stuff, but for, for a jumping off point, I think grass fields is the way to go. I don't know, let's call it Scarlet Fields. Right, that sounds good. Um, we'll, we'll just go private, but I suppose, can you make it... Oh, you can make it friends only or private? Oh, you can't have it public. Interesting. Okay, we'll start this. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to load because it'll have to go initial. It's not procedural, from what I understand, which is the most interesting thing. Um... It is funny how I think a lot of people just, like we enjoyed procedural when it came onto the scene. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about like a map that is just totally randomly generated from the start. There'll be some constraints, but my map should be different to yours. And it's a cool idea, um, but it's almost become a crutch in modern design. The market seemed to have gotten flooded with procedural everything. So it's refreshing to see something that's a little bit more crafted. Now, I could be wrong. But my understanding was that the satisfactory maps are actually all identical. In fact, I think you even sort of start in the same point, or close to the same point. Oh. Oh, we're hitching a little bit. What is going on there, game? Oh, maybe it was just that sort of initial... initial Attention, load. Attention, Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Yes, ma'am. I love this setup so Fix -It much. Pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Yeah. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Good. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Correct, Make yes. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. Expand your factories, outposts, and pipelines through automation and augmentation. Yes. That's it. Get That's to it. work and be effective. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I probably Maybe recommended it on previous... Imminent. Previous versions of uh, Satisfactory. I've only done a little bit on the channel. Atmospheric entry in um, five, Check out the movie three, Prospect. Two, it's an. Uh, it's probably not Netflix. It's a sci-fi prospecting movie from a year or two ago. It just. It's if you like the stuff I do on the channel, the survival on space stations and moons and that, you'll like that. 
Um, I also love this, the art aesthetic for this. I don't know what it is technically, because I'm a huge fan of retro futurism, especially inspired by that clean 70s look that you see in Alien. It's in Alien Isolation. It's in the TV show Maniac. You don't see it so much, but more and more you do see it. But this, I call... I, I don't know what else to call it other than clean futurism. Um, and I've used... Um, Jurassic World Evolution as an example. Go check it out. Even look at videos if you've never played it. You'll see what I mean. You've got industry and engineering sort of buildings, but they are, they have this very clear, clean, squared look. It's almost opposite of the 80s futurism that you get out of the cyberpunk theme from like your Blade Runners and your Aliens, you know, Alien 2. Um, you'll see as we go along. Keep that in the back of your mind. All the buildings are sort of they just have this clean design to them, yet they still have this engineering detail. Having said that, that's that's got some good nicks and bumps in it as well. Oh wow, look at that out there. Look at this big dude and his tiny Welcome head. Welcome to Planet Massage 2 ABB, your designated sector in the binary star system of Akija. Maybe it is procedural. Maybe I've landed in a different also spot. Also known as artificial so, directory and assistant, tasked to support pioneers such as you in their mission. You okay. are the third of your sector to survive planetfall. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Note, objective based introduction initialized. Welcome to onboarding. Yes. I guess we can skip all that. All right. So again, I haven't played First this bit since launch. Please dismantle the drop pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat right. and utility base from now on referred to Done. as the hub. Yep, yep. Note, fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. Yes, ma'am. Now, is Q the build menu? There's Second a build objective. menu. Tab? Please ensure you have your fix it incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop yeah, let's zone. Let's do that. No. Yes. According to Fixit regulations, this is my every friend maker should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. So there's like gas Third area objective. over there. Please familiarize cool. yourself with the resource scanner to find iron. Oh yeah, right. Note, so that's Charlie. The position of iron is considered essential in preparation for all future objectives. There we go. That's the closest one. So we should probably set up shop near that close one, right? So off we go. Oh yeah, that's right. You press E to pick up all the shrubberies and that. So that's good. This consumable possesses minor healing properties. Further analysis required to establish object scanner identification. Okay. Picking Initial everything. Reveal coloring properties in the flower petals. Further oh, here we go. Required. Look at this. So there's our there's our metal outcrops. This I'll do another scan just to show you. Minor healing properties. Bing. Further analysis required to establish object scanner identification. Come on then, mate. Come on then. Come and have a go, son. Oh jeez, it's stuttering a bit. Give me your bits. The I might turn the graphics down in the end. You get, this is the sort of game that it's going to really task your processor as well. Analysis. Wow, what's going on there? Is that... What is that? I think that's my graphics card dying. That that doesn't seem right. Anyway, so we're going to go over here and we're going to chip at this. And if you chip at the big lump, you get a lot more ore per go, Ooh, but you objective. use it up very quickly. Note. To complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop hub Right, will and be now you, you have infinite on the ground, Caution. but it is, um, is built on spacious open an impure deposit. Maybe this is also sources. impure? Failure to impure, do so right, so it's limited by the quality of that progress. deposit, but as far as I can understand, it's infinite. Alright, press Q to build the hub. Roger Dodger. Oh, there we go, so we can, like, turn it sideways. Boots. Off you go. Alright, we've got a hub. Got exclamation marks everywhere. This is our craft bench. You have unlocked hub feature manual craft. Tier bench. zero is hub where you start. Hub terminal. Fifth objective. Hub upgrade, storage and power. Yes, ma'am. Alright, select milestone. Bang. 
And it sort of helps guide you along. It's got an overlay. Alright, so we've got to make ten of those things. What's going on with these exclamation marks? Chill out. Alright, so if we go here, you can see there's the recipe for the iron rod, but you need uh, ingots, and it's a one-to-one -one exchange by the look of it. What about this? Is this one-to-one? -one? It is too, so we can just make ten of those. Ten. Make ten of these. Easy peasy. Can I just press escape? Good. Nice. And then, uh, can I just double click or something? No, I have to actually do it like that. Upgrade hub. Bullets. Oh, we got some more bits now? There we go. So we've got a box. That's Congratulations. cool. You have unlocked hub feature biomass generator. And then we've got... Hub feature personal storage. Scanner this is like a generator. Cover. And even though I was saying there was that New sort of clean futurism, look how filthy this bloody thing is. When built, I build like that that's sort of... Bench, respectively. Oh, that's so cool. Because you watch once we start building Sixth some objective. things. Like even this bench, you can sort of see what I mean. When I say clean, Note. I'm also talking Connect about all the angular design power. going into it. Note, buildings such as the smelter require a blueprint to be set. Right. Okay, so we're going to go hub upgrade 2, we're on the tier, tier, tier 0 track, and that's why I like this game as well. There is sort of a an objective tree to guide you along. I've, I've said it many times before, I don't like true uh, sandbox. I need something to do usually. I'm not that creative a person. Okay, cool, so we need to make plates, rods, and wire. Now, it should have, if we unlocked things, it usually tells you. So we've got the craft bench and the equipment workshop. This is already a craft bench, so unless we need to make a remote one, there's no need for that. But we've also got the smelter available. I don't think... Oh, we've got power lines. That'll come in handy. And we've got the hub. So let's get cracking on... Wait, which one did we already have? Craft bench. Well, let's get an equipment workshop up and running. What do we need for that? Can't afford. All right. Um... There was a way, if I do that, right? Yeah, so there it is on the side now. So six plate, six rod, we can do that. That'll be 12 of these. So yeah, it all starts with this manual labor, and that's, that's your gameplay loop, ultimately. Oh, okay, that must have been a two for one. That's fine. Do this. Nice. So now we can build equipment workshop. I guess we could... Is that just going to float? What's going to happen there? It's sort of floating, I suppose. It's like a step. Ah, it's cool. It's cool design, actually. Oh, look, the, the little legs compensate. That's good. That's a, that's a good way to build with grid, uh, to deal with grid building. You see what I mean about this? Like I said, this this clean looking thing. It's got. I also like this tiny sort of IKEA modular display home setup as well. You've got this little doodacky here. You've got your your oh your workshop hygiene is on point. I live for that sort of crap. Then we've got our workbench here. We've got some little targets. Oh my goodness! It's just so purpose built. Got little trick can that you could live in here. So good. Anyway, so what can we do with this? We can build a portable miner. Xeno Zapper we don't need to build because we've already got one of them. But a portable miner we absolutely would love to build. How do we uh, add to list? Oh, you just right click. Oh. Oh. Okay, so iron plate. We've done this dance. But the cable's going to get us. Um, and you see in the little square brackets it tells you what you can afford at that point in time. Right, so we're going to need copper, and we should now be able to find it on the scanner. Let's hope it's not too far. That's not bad. 100 meters, something like that. We should be able to figure our way up here. Not bad. Now this game, the sense of scale in it is like a serious consideration for your engineering pursuits. So you'll get to a point where you'll need some sort of end game. Come on. Come on mate. How hurt am I? Oh, I'm fine. Um, 
say you'll want oil or something, but it'll be out bloody there where that waterfall is. Like, it'll be kilometers away. So, walking from point to point becomes just, just unrealistic, essentially. Oh, now this is a pure... On a normal. Normal? Cool. So it's a slightly more uh, higher quality deposit than our uh, other one. And I think you can you can put multiple of the little the little mining robots on, uh, but I don't think you can put more than one actual mining building on one of these deposits. So there is kind of a ceiling to how much you can draw from a deposit, and you'll have that tied up in a production chain, which which means there's a lot of incentive for you to build wider and farther as you go. We're actually gonna get this as well because this will help. But yeah, like, it's a consideration you don't see a lot in these games. They don't usually deal with scale. You know, you build your compact little base, and I love compact. But even look at my station ears. I only really stray out into the wilderness a little bit. You know, a lot of these games encourage this sort of central base building. So instead of trying to make you migrate in this, it actually makes you build distances where you have to build train line and truck routes just because building an entire, say, like, conveyor belt all the way out there is just unrealistic. It's a, it's a waste of man manpower. Uh, okay, anyway, so... Um, copper ingot will give us wire and cable, similar to the iron plate and iron rods sort of thing. Or rather, actually, wire will give us cable. How much cable we need? Four. Alright, well, there we go. That's That's enough. So that's for the portable miner dude. Uh, which we'll build. Oh, I guess we have to hold it down. Nice. Now we should have him in our inventory. And there he is. So double click. Little buddy. Jeez, it takes up a bit of the screen, doesn't it? Alright, so we can just sort of... How do we uh, put you down? Do I just press like F or something? No, not F. Maybe I just press left click. That makes sense. Look at him! What a little cute, cute little dude. And he'll get, he'll get cracking. Off you go, little fella. And he's pretty much self-sustaining, and he'll just infinitely go. Uh, well, infinitely, he will have a, a cargo limit. He can just come up and grab all, and so he'll eventually sort of time out. So that's that's going to be a big help for us moving forward. I think it's probably a smart move. Just let's just sort of be diligent about it. Let's get another one of these going. Um, what's that going to take? Let's put it on the to-do list because we'll go and put, we'll go plonk one up on the copper as well. Uh, what do we need? Iron plate, four plate. Okay. And then we need uh, four cable. All right. And we need a little bit more wire. Look at that, perfect. All right, so let's just build him. Nice, we'll go walk out in the boonies. He's definitely in our inventory. There he is. So we'll go up there and we'll have a, have a squeeze. And look at this guy go. He's actually, he's doing quite well. So we just want to grab all, we don't want the miner. And we'll just scan so I remember where we're going. Heading out to the copper. Yeah, it's a pretty pleasant game. Not a lot of uh, like antagonists. The wildlife doesn't seem to be much worse than that. There, there are some higher, more evil wildlife guarding some higher end resources. But that's sort of like uh, cross that bridge when you come to it. Oh, I actually had to fire him onto the ground, not into the air sort of thing. Seems kind of... Maybe they've changed it so you can only put one on a thing. I'm not sure. But one on that's just going to be fine for the moment. Look at that. I love it. The big stingray thing. Now, I don't know if there's any terraforming in this game. Like, I don't think you can destroy the existing rock or anything. Maybe you can. I, I can't be certain to be perfect. Oh, you can pick these little flowers. That's lovely. There's a cool mechanic to it all as well, is like you, you put all this bio material, like you pull down these trees and stuff, and you put them in your generator, but then they're gone. So as you build more industry, you're gonna clear a clearing. 
uh, around you, which, you know, is interesting. See your effect on the surrounds. Alright, so we pretty much exhausted this uh, for the time being. What else can this build? Just, that's right, just the raw sort of stuff. So I'm just sort of going through it nice and slow. And now we want to build a smelter, I would say. Let's get a smelter going. I can't afford it. Uh, let's just add it to there. Alright. Need some iron rods. Five of. And then we need some wire. So yeah, ultimately the goal will be to make machinery that can do all this crap for us. Alright, so let's put a, a smelter. All of this can be moved later on, I suppose. Let's just bung him there. Yeah, I kind of love how the feet steady it all up. That's so good. It's probably, to me, this is the only way to do it in an engineering sort of thing. Because this encourages to build, like, a, an in, a floor plan, you know? To keep everything on the same sort of landing. It's great. Less about making, like, uh, less about just flattening the terrain and terraforming it to suit you. More about working around the existing terrain, which is fairly realistic as far as I'm concerned. Now, we're going to need to connect this with power to that. And for that, we're going to need... Can't afford... Can you tell me what I need to afford it? Missing cable. Okay. Alright, let's go. Cable. Oh, there we go. We'll build two there. There we go. So that's now connected up to our generator. Do a little ladder. Yeah, you see what I mean? This is clean futurism. I don't know what else to call this art style, but I think that's an appropriate term. Coined it myself. So you can tell it to build either iron ingots or copper ingots. And basically you just go ahead and dump up to like a, a one stack in there. And then what, we'll have to get this generator going. Uh, and we've got some uh, bioproduct here. So, oh, we've got leaves. Let's just dump those leaves in there. So that'll just start churning that into power. And then this thing's going to start ticking along, making us ingots. So that's a little bit less messing around. So how cool is that? Now, let's go back to the uh, the next milestone and have a look at what we need. Oh, well, there you go. It, it keeps it ever-present in the top corner. Now, we probably could have just manhandled that, you know, as well, but we will start to bottleneck at a certain point. You know, you, you, your actual production efficiency will drop off because it's going to give us more tools to um, to do the job. Now, you could try and rush certain tools. I can, I can understand that, you know. Uh, I'm quite happy just going at a leisurely pace. There's no rush to endgame in this, I don't think. So let's just grab all of that, and then we'll put all of that in here, and then we'll grab the ingots. So we've got a small production line going now. Let's get tin iron plate going. Where are our iron plates? Oh, I can see them in my inventory. Iron rods. Seven, not quite there yet. We still have a lot of copper left over. We need 50 wire. Oh, not quite. Not quite. Oh, well, actually, there you go. It's gonna... Oh, just... Look at that. One short. What are the absolute odds on that? Oh, we can make way more iron ingots, so that's nice. Alright, so we'll make a few more rods. We're gonna need to go get some more copper. So that robot's probably quite full by now. Scanner's got some range on it. It went out to 500 meters, at least. Hmm. Good to know. Oh, so he's finished, and that's because he's got his 100 stack. Empty him out, fires back up. He doesn't need a power source or anything like that. It's all fairly self-sufficient, which is cool. So, yeah, and I'm all right with that as well. You know, this game's not necessarily going for that hyper-realism. It knows what its loop is. That it is a production mine line management and optimization game, right? The, going hyper realism, maybe trying to replace batteries and power source for that little dude will create. Uh, what would you call it? 
but it's not it's not gameplay that's conducive to the overall experience. It would bog it down with extra crap. And that's where I think sometimes simulation games miss the mark. I don't mind a hardcore simulation like uh, Station is, but sometimes they're just too busy trying to make it like real world, they forget that it's about being fun first. Anyway. Thoughts with the Scarlet Seeker. Alright, well we should have enough now, so if we just go here, double click, double click, what was the other thing, these, bang, hit that button baby, look at that, look at this upgrade, we got a, got like a little house now, there you go, new buildings, new parts. Congratulations, you have unlocked scanner stone, new buildings and blueprints, which can be found in the build menu and craft bench respectively. Yeah, thank you. Seventh objective, hub upgrade, conveyor belts. Oh. Note, use power oh, tells you what's to expand coming. the power network for optimal results. Right, Note, yes ma'am. Constructors are capable of constructing copious parts, of which only one type at a time. That makes sense. Okay, so we'll select the milestone. You've got the idea, and then it's just ad nauseum. Which is exactly what you want if this is your sort of game. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than this. Now, what new toys do we have in our kit? Uh, we've got a constructor, which essentially does limited construction. And now we've got a power pole, so we can have a, a pretty good grid, grid. But that's all we've really got at the moment. So let's get a constructor going ASAP. Now we need three reinforced plate, which is sort of like an, a higher tier version of iron plate. You can click on it there. It requires iron plate and screws to get going. So let's, uh, can you actually add, oh you can add them to the to-do list? Hmm, can you like shift add? Oh you can! Oh now that is interesting, hang on. Can I shift remove? Yeah, okay. Well hang on, so it wants me to Oh, wait, 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 wait. Alright, hang on, I'm a little confused now, because I wasn't holding shift then. Oh, okay, so the shift was a toggle sort of thing. That's okay. Well, there we go, we need to build three reinforced plate. This is inter I never really thought to do... this. Alright, so constructor requires... that's our constructor. Requires three reinforced plate, All right? So we're gonna go one, two, three. How cool is that? And it also wants us to build another cable. Like this is very fiddly, but you never know. This this might appeal. This appeals to me, to be perfectly honest. All right? And how far how far down do you want to go? You could go all the way. To, like you could go. Iron plate is pretty straightforward, but screws, right? Well, one, two. I want 72 screws. Let's do this. 72 screws. Iron rods. All right, well, I want 71 of them. So there you go, you could, you could make a robust shopping list. And again, I'm not necessarily saying I would do this every time. I'm using this as an example, just so you can get your head around it, because I think this is actually fascinating. Look at that. Now, it is sort of out of order, and it looks like it's cutting off on the side. Hmm. That's okay. So maybe there is a limit to, to what you can sort of do there. But that's okay. Alright, well, I guess if you wanted to make iron plate, you could you could do the ingot thing and all that. In fact, we'll do an ingot lap now. That's cool. I, I really appreciate that. I think at later builds, when stuff get really complicated, it would help to make like a huge shopping list, to be perfectly honest. Oh, excuse me. Alright. And then we'll pull... Give me those ingots. Nice. Wait, are you... Are you not working? Oh, you are. You just sounded like you weren't making noise. Okay. Cool. So let's uh, let's build those iron plates. Twelve of. There you go. And, it, and you can watch the right hand side to get an idea. That's so good. 
Alright, iron rods. Now here's the interesting thing. We're doing 72 iron rods because of the screws. Now look at that. The Now that's interesting actually. So I take back some of what I said because it's a 6 to 1. That's not super accurate. So we've built way too many iron rods. Unless we're using them in something else, which we're not. Huh. But it is interesting that it started to pull down the iron rods as well. Hmm. A bit more testing required here, I think, but... But for the most part, it's not a bad little system. Look at that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so we've built our reinforced plate. I can't even remember what the bloody hell we were doing that for. Uh, it was for this. It was for the constructor. Right. I don't know, let's, uh, let's put him over here. Alright, all this is going to move eventually. I think you can, yeah, if you can press control, you can, uh, you can sort of try and grid snap it to existing structures, which is fantastic. But I'm not worried about any of that right now. Because if we go into this menu, have a bit of a squiz, and this is all the stuff that this can make at this point, sort of rudimentary stuff. And similar to Factorio, we'll get to a point where there are items that require two precursor uh, reagents that need to be combined. And I think that goes into like a, a more advanced assembler type thing. But uh, but from here, you can see, we can start sort of... Um, we can make biomass out of leaves, which I think is much more efficient as well. So potentially now you're starting to see the scope of building your factory because you could ultimately you'd want a machine for each and every one of these type of components, right? Surely, that makes sense. That's where the efficiency is. Um, but yeah, so so down the rabbit hole we bloody well go, you know? I'd probably get a, an iron plate manufactory going on here. And then conveyor belts will be the next step. We're not going to have time to cover that, but these are like belt inputs and outputs. So essentially, what, what you would actually end up doing is uh, when we have a more advanced mining machine, we could run it straight into here so it would feed iron in. Let's give it some more iron. And then the ingots would be fed along here and they have different production times as well, so you have to balance those sort of ratios too. So we do this, and then we potentially have to put power up. Now, it might not reach... You can't collect, connect more lines to this connection. So what you need to do, we won't be able to cover it here, is that this can only have one power line running off of it, so then you'd have to build one of these, a concrete power pole, which can have four things connected to it. And so you use that as a bit of a hub power junction. So it's all very complicated. Like I said, no survival component, but definitely tickles that station ears itch. Uh, bang on a playlist and play this till 3 a.m. You Trust me, I've done that before. <laughs> anyway, team, let me know what you think. If you want to see more of this, I would be happy to keep blasting through it. But we might just leave it there for the time being. And I will catch you guys on the next one.